Hello, this is a video that introduces you to UV visible spectrometry. This video aims to give you an overview on the principle of operation of UV visible spectrometry and Beer's law. There are also important steps for you to take note of when comes to perform measurements using a UV visible spectrometer. This includes the choice of qubit, building a standard calibration curve, and performing a sample scan. To begin, it is essential to assess if the compound of your interest is suitable to be measured using a UV visible spectrometer. You should also have the following information to make sure what you measure is accurate and reliable. In addition, a standard curve is commonly built to ensure that the concentration of the desired compounds is determined correctly. However, it is more important to identify the purpose of the measurement, and thus allows you to process the absorbance readings more meaningfully. A UV visible spectrometer detects a compound that absorbs radiation in a range between 160 to 780 nanometers which covers from UV to visible light range. This means that the compound is most probably colored, or it has a conjugated system in its molecular structure. A conjugated system allows energy of this radiation range to be absorbed which causes an electronic transition. The range of light absorbed is highly dependent of the chemical structure of the molecule, aka chromophores. In principle, a spectrometer records the radiation at which the absorption occurs at a specific wavelength, and the degree of absorption. Note that different chemical structures absorb at different wavelengths due to different chromophores. Hence it is important for you to know the wavelength in which the absorption occurs. You can either obtain the value from literature or determine it experimentally. In a UV spectrometer, a beam of visible light source is separated into its preset wavelength by a prism or diffraction grating. The monochromatic beam is then split into two beams of equal intensity. One beam is to pass through the qubit in which contains a sample. The other beam is to pass through another qubit which contains only the solvent. The intensities of sample beam AMD reference beam are FEB measured and compared. This is a schematic diagram that shows the process of filtering the light source followed by the split of light beam into a reference beam and a sample beam. The measurements can be presented as transmittance which is the ratio between the light transmitted through the sample against that of reference. But it is more common to present the measurement as absorbance which is the logarithm of the reciprocal of the ratio. In a typical UV visible spectrum, the absorbance scale is placed on the y-axis to show the intensity of light absorbed by a compound over a range of wavelength. The higher the absorbance, the lesser light intensity is transmitted through a sample. In other words, the higher the transmittance, the lower the absorption. This is an example of a UV visible spectrum scan of an organic compound dissolved in ethanol. This spectrum is collected when you wish to identify the wavelength that gives the strongest absorption. This value of wavelength is known as lambda max, which can be used as a reference wavelength for detection in the subsequent analyses. This is another example of UV visible spectrum that shows the absorption of certain wavelengths of visible light by chlorophyll. Note that the color absorbed is blue in 420 nanometers and red in 660 nanometers. This causes chlorophyll to appear green, which is the light transmitted. This means that the color of a sample is complementary to the wavelengths in which it absorbs. Beer's law says that the absorbance of a compound is directly proportional to the concentration of the sample. It is also affected by the length of light path, which is equal to the width of the qubit. Thus, the relationship can be established into a mathematical equation as shown. If the same qubit is used, the absorbance is therefore directly proportional to the concentration of a sample and its molar absorptivity, denoted as epsilon. Note that different compounds have different ability if absorb light. Some absorb more than the others at the same concentration. Hence you may wish to find out the molar absorptivity for the compound of interest, which will help you to decide an appropriate concentration of sample to be prepared prior to analysis. 
Otherwise, a preliminary trial can always be performed to measure its absorbance to estimate the intensity. An ideal range of absorbance is 1 AU and below. As mentioned earlier, UV visible spectrometer is useful when you wish to detect or quantify the concentration of colored compounds such as conjugated systems or transition metal complexes. It is also a popular method as it is non-invasive, which means that the sample can be used repeatedly. It is a sensitive method which can measure a small change in the amount of substance, which makes it useful when you wish to investigate the possible changes in a compound when it is subjected to some possible external factors. This is additional information on different types of light source found in a UV visible spectrometer. They offer different range of light radiation in general. Using the right qubit is also important in the measurement of absorbance. The choice of using a curette depends on the medium in which you sample is dissolved in. Please request for a quartz qubit from our lab technicians if your sample is dissolved in an organic solvent, such as alcohol. Otherwise, you may use a plastic qubit which is readily available in the labs. There are also marks on the qubit which indicate the range of wavelength which light can transmit through. To operate a UV spectrometer, we should first perform a blank run. A blank run is done with a qubit filled with distilled water or solvent which is used to dissolve the sample. This is to ensure that all possible background noise that can contribute to the absorbance is eliminated prior to sample run. To perform a blank run, a clean and dry qubit is filled with the solvent to three quarters of the qubit and inserted into a slot with the clear side of the qubit facing the light path. Next, the lambda max of the compound should be determined. It is strongly recommended that a spectrum scan is done even though there is a literature value, as there may be a slight discrepancy in the absorption due to the sensitivity of equipment and the preparation method. It is also recommended to perform a trial scan on the sample to ensure that the absorbance is within the tolerance range of the concentration used. Also, note that different compounds may give you different range of absorbance due to the difference in the absorptivity coefficients. A standard calibration curve is strongly recommended as well, especially if you wish to quantify the change in the amount of the compound of interest. The range of standards concentrations highly depends on the amount of compound available and the extent of change when it is subjected to a preset manipulated variable. Hence a calibration curve should be made after sample analysis, so as to ensure that the absorbance data falls within the concentration range of standards. Since the standards are commonly prepared by serial dilution, the range of the standards concentration is usually in sequential manner. Ideally, a linear graph of absorbance against concentration should be obtained, a direct proportional relationship as described by Beer's law. The solution used for standards and for sample analyses should ideally be prepared in the same batch as there may be discrepancy in the concentration due to inconsistent preparation steps. Here are the steps to perform a sample scan and save the data from the equipment. Please make sure that the absorbance reading is within the tolerance as shown. It is not meaningful to obtain an absorbance reading beyond 1.5 AU as the absorbance is a logarithm scale of the ratio between transmitted light and reference light. At an absorbance reading of 2 means that you have almost 100% absorption. At this reading, it means that your sample is absorbing most of the light and would be too dark for an accurate measurement to be made. 
In addition, a reading beyond 1a u can sometimes lead to a nonlinear relationship between absorbance and concentration due to the interaction between the compounds and the refractive index of the solvent. In other words, there are other interference that would deviate the linear relationship and hence it is meaningless to obtain the concentration from the calibration curve at such absorbance readings. After establishing a standard curve, students are strongly recommended to process the relevant error propagation and incorporate the error bars into the graph. This will subsequently allow you to obtain an uncertainty of the gradient using min-max plot. The uncertainty of the gradient should be included in the subsequent calculation of concentration from the calibration curve. The calibration curve should ideally be a linear graph that crosses at the origin as described by Beer's law. Here shows the process of min-max plot. A max and a min line are drawn using the error bars as shown. The formula to obtain the uncertainty of the gradient is given. This is the end of the video. We hope that you will find these details useful in the design and execution of your experiments.